tonight. We have Dr. Ted Brower, healthmasters.com. An issue with uh, doctors in Florida succumbing um, under mysterious circumstances. Oh, but it's not on the major media. No one cares about it. And uh, one of our good friends, Dr. Ted Brower, is in that class. Our special guest tonight, Mr. Ted Brewer, after an hour, after an hour's worth of technical difficulties, we are back up, back up running. Ted, uh, I apologize for that uh, that hour stolen from us, but let's get right to it. Um, those people know Ted Brewer, Ted Brewer, healthmasters.com. Ted, fire away. Thanks, Doug. I'm sure you're as uh, happy to be back on as I am right now. I don't like breaking well, news stories like this and then not have them break because – of the controversial nature of the information. So I want to read a disclaimer before we get started on this. Uh, tonight's presentation is for alternative news sources only. Uh, these are my opinions or the opinions of the articles and the research papers that I'm going to read to you guys tonight. Now, one of the conditions that Dr. Russell Blaylock talks about that occurs immediately after immunization, especially with a DPT shot, is what's called an encephalitic scream. And what happens with that, Doug, is you give this little baby, like at the 18 months, his second or third round of booster shots, and what happens is this cytokine storm hits the body because it can't use vitamin D anymore, and it causes the brain to swell. And this little child starts screaming for hours and hours and hours with its back arched in its bed. It happens all the time. And when you call most doctors who give, them the, to give these children these shots, they say, oh, that's normal, that'll go away tomorrow. That's called an encephalitic scream from swelling of the brain, and the brain is pressing against the skull. Now, this is crazy. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. This is actually going on. And so it's what he's saying, that when you increase the vitamin D levels, that all of these different symptoms end up going away. I am not making any claims concerning GCMAF. I have never sold GCMAF. I don't even know where to buy GCMAF. I have never used GCMAF. It is not available from any source that I know, and the only company that I know that it was making it in Europe has been shut down last month when these doctors started to die. Now, let me give you some information on what happened here. In the last few weeks, in the last month, several alternative doctors here in Florida have died. They have died mysteriously, and nobody really understands why they died. It was either linked to suicide or to uh, heart attacks and just finding them dead in cars. And all of these doctors that have died in Florida apparently were interlocked through Dr. Gonzalez and Dr. Bradstreet. And what they were doing is they were doing extensive research on autism and what was causing autism. Now, I want you guys to get a sheet of paper and pencil because the information I'm about to give you right now is extremely controversial, and a bunch of people have exited the planet who are working with it. This information has been around for a while. They knew the information they were working with, and they were basically being very, very careful, supposedly, and some of them were being accused of having used GCMAF, and the Food and Drug Administration apparently raided several of their offices several weeks before they committed suicide or suddenly died. Now, let me share something with you very quickly and what this is. And this when I and it's gonna be it's gonna sound complicated, but I'm gonna break this down super, super easy for everybody listening tonight. When you first hear these terms, they're gonna sound weird to you. But we're not gonna make them weird. We're gonna make them very easy. G C protein is a protein in the body that is used by macrophages in the body. And what it does, macrophages in the body are the ones that kill cancer cells. They basically stop cytokine storms and can be involved in cytokine storms. We'll explain what all these terms mean in a few minutes. The GC protein in the body adds vitamin D to it. Doug, how many times have I told the listening audience you have to take vitamin D every single day? That's super important, and, we're, and we've got another bunch of notes, too. We're going to talk about the other ways that they're doing things to us to reduce the population of the planet. Now, what's interesting about this is, remember, GC protein, it gets vitamin D added to it, and the GC protein becomes what's called GCMAF. This GCMAF protein is human immune system enzyme protein, also known as vitamin D binding protein, 
macrophage activating factor. Now, what that simply means is this. This GCMAF is probably the single most effective thing in the immune system to kill cancer cells. And what's happening is the immune system is being compromised by a product called Nagalase. It's an enzyme slash protein, and it's made by cancer cells and viruses causing immunodeficiency syndromes. It's also been linked to autism and a host of other problems we're going to talk about tonight. Now, what ends up happening is this. When this GC protein cannot be converted to the GCMAF protein, the entire immune system is compromised. What these doctors found was this, that this Nagalase protein enzyme they felt was being introduced into the body either virally or directly through immunizations. This is the protein power, this is the enzyme protein that destroys the immune system. I'm going to repeat this. Apparently, since these guys are dead and I can't talk to them, they have found that the Nagalase enzyme protein that was made by cancer cells and viruses, which causes immunodeficiency, is being added through the immunizations, either through viruses or through the immunization itself being given Nagalase. This is such incredibly damning information to the entire medical profession and the immunological profession and those folks that are producing immunizations that apparently they didn't want these guys around. Now, I'm not saying what happened to these guys. I'm just saying they're not on this planet anymore. So what ends up happening is this. The GC protein cannot attach itself to vitamin D because of the nagalase. When that happens, the nagalase becomes the agent that causes the cancer. Now, let's talk about nagalase for a second. Now, we know that nagalase is being found in super high concentrations in autistic children. And what they're saying is that the nagalase protein, this viral protein, was not in these children at childbirth, but it's being introduced somehow into these children they felt during the immunization process. Now, again, I wasn't involved in their research. I haven't seen the, the double-blind clinical studies. I'm going to read you some information on Nagalase. Nagalase is a protein made by all cancer cells and viruses. Its former official name is, now this is a long name, is alpha and acetyl galactose minidase. But let's just call it Nagalase for this tonight. Now, Nagalase causes immunodeficiency. It was being found in children being diagnosed with autism in high concentration. Nagalase blocks the production of the GCMAF, which is the vitamin D binding to the GC protein, and thus it prevents the immune system from doing its job. Without an active immune system, cancer and viral infections can grow unchecked. As an extremely sensitive marker for all cancer, Nagalase provides a powerful system for early detection. Serial Nagalase testing provides a reliable and accurate method for tracking the results of any therapeutic regime for cancer, AIDS, or other chronic infections. This is an article from a book from Dr. Tim Smith, MD. He goes on to say, and this is super important, now guys, listen to me on this. He says that Nagalase is like a stealth bomber. The Nagalase enzyme synthesized in and released from cancer cells or a virus particle pinpoints the GCMAF protein facilities on the surface of your T and B lymphocytes, this is part of your immune system, and simply wipes them out with an incredibly precise bomb, is what he says. How precise? He says, let me put it this way. Nagalase locates and attacks one specific two-electron bond located at only at the 420th amino acid position on a huge protein molecule one of tens of thousands of proteins, each containing millions of electrons. This is like selectively taking out a park bench in a major city from 6,000 miles away. More astonishing, if that is possible, Nagalase never misses its target. There is no collateral damage. As you already know, GCMAF is a cell signaling glycoprotein that talks to the macrophages, enabling them to rapidly find, attack, and kill viruses and cancer cells. 
by activating these macrophages, this GCMF protein triggers a cascade that activates the entire immune system. When you block the production of this protein, Doug, this nagalase brings all of this wonderful anti-cancer, antiviral immune activity to a screeching halt, allowing cancer and infections to spread. These doctors apparently felt that this nagalase was being introduced via immunizations, either viral or through nagalase itself, being directly injected into the children who were developing autism, who had very high nagalase at the very beginning of the autistic cycle, immediately after the immunizations. So what they're saying is there's a smoking gun here with nagalase in the compromised immune system. The GM, the GCMAF for the treatment of cancer, this is another article, and this is by David Noakes, and this is, uh, this is, this is called GCMAF, it's available online, for the treatment of cancer, autism, inflammation, viral, and bacterial disease. And what it says, human GCMAF, otherwise known as the vitamin D binding protein macrophage, which is the macrophage, which is like a vacuum cleaner that kills up cancer cells in the body, holds great promise in the treating of various illness, including cancer, autism, chronic fatigue, and possibly Parkinson's. Since, ni- since 1990, 59 research papers have been published on this GCMAF. 20 of these are pertaining to treatment of cancer. 46 of these can be accessed online. GCMFF is a vital part of our immune system, which does not work without it, and it is part of the blood. When you, in, when you, when you put this other product, this nagalase, into the blood, it cannot produce GCMAF. Let me say that again. And so it's been shown to help such neurological diseases as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory conditions, and diabetic retinopathy. In the case of Dr. Autism, the, I'm sorry, in the case of autism, Dr. James Bradstreet has so far treated 1,100 patients with GCMAF with an 85% response rate, Doug. This is supposed to be impossible. His, his results show that a bell curve response with 15% of the patients showing total eradication of the symptoms. 15% of the autistic patients that he tested were no longer autistic. They had total eradication of the symptoms when they reintroduced GCMAF, which had been blocked by this nagalase. However, to, now he goes on to say, in addition, experimental and clinical evidence confirms that GCMAF shows multiple powerful anti-cancer effects that have significant therapeutic impact on most tumors. In other words, they're, he, they're saying here it reduces... They're saying it cures breast, prostate, kidney cancers. GCMF is created in the body by the release of two sugar molecules from a GC protein molecule. However, tumors release an enzyme called nagalase. Nagalase degrades this protein to the point where it can no longer attach with vitamin D. So what's happening is this nagalase is being introduced into the body somehow, and these doctors were saying it was through immunizations. In conclusion, the GCMAF restores the energetic balance in the cell. Cancer cells driven by sugar metabolism become healthy oxygen-driven cells, so tumor cells no longer behave as a parasitic organism. The GCMAF stimulates microphages to consume the cancer cells and cells invaded by the viruses. This stimulation of the immune system and the anti antiogenic effect surrounding the tumor is beneficial in the cancer and several neurological orders such as autism, chronic fatigue, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. And then it say, he so goes on to say that it's available to the general public, which it no longer is. The laboratory producing it in Europe has been shut down. At the same time, these doctors supposedly left the planet. This is another article by Kent Heckel, Hecken Lively, and it says, Dr. Bradstreet, Nagalase, and the viral issue in autism. He says in this article he wrote, in the past months, Dr. Bradstreet has become interested in Nagalase which he describes as an enzyme produced by cancer cells and viruses. He thinks it unlikely that children with autism have undiagnosed cancers and thus suspicion falls into the viral ideology. Dr. Bradstreet writes, viruses make the nagalase enzyme as part of their attachment proteins. It serves to get the virus into the cell and also decreases the body's immune reaction to the virus, thereby increasing the odds of survival. He goes on the right. It is quite reasonable and likely that the nature of the immune dysfunction and, sub, and, and, the, and the frequently observed autoimmune problems in autism are mediated by persistent unresolved viral infections. 
He claims to have tested approximately 400 children with autism for the viral marker, Nagalase, and found nearly 80% have significantly elevated levels. He hopes to publish this article and this information soon. Of course, we know he's not going to do that because he has left the planet. He goes on to go. He goes on to say that. that this, I'm going I'm to keep reading, and then I'm going to. Then we're going to do some other stuff. Because I, I want to get this information out. This is this is a straight article, and it's from the role of type D to the vitamin D and type two diabetes. The role of di- the vitamin D and type two diabetes. Now, I, now you say, what does this have to do with autism? Listen to what it says. In recent years, researchers have linked low level of vitamin D levels to insulin resistance and diabetes. Overcoming insulin resistance in particular could be the way to head off type 2 diabetes before it sets in. Right now, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence to suggest that giving people vitamin D may help them with their insulin resistance. The researchers on this article are Meredith Hawkins, MD, and Preddy Kishore. She goes on to say, this is super important, that these macrophages, these vacuum cleaners of the immune system, are specialized immune cells that attack invaders, and researchers now think may have a secondary function as a cleanup crew. When fat cells get too large, they die, and macrophages move to eliminate the dead tissue. That, Kishwar says, may be why the cells are overrepresented in fatty tissue and why inflammation, a sign that macrophages are at work, is often more severe in people who are overweight or obese. I'm tying this diabetes right now. Everybody listen to me. For people with diabetes, the latest research suggests that macrophage activity can have an added drawback. Macrophages at work produce chemicals called cytokines. The cytokines are what cause inflammation. They serve as signal to other. They serve as a signal carriers to other parts of the body. They can compare insulin action in the liver and muscle. Higher cytokines mean more insulin resistance, a key factor in type two diabetes. Now, what also happens is this: things called what's called a cytokine storm. When these macrophages don't get sufficient quantities of vitamin D, they start releasing huge amounts of cytokines. So when you're giving a person these different chemicals in their diet, this nagalase, you can't get the vitamin D to attach to the macrophage. And when that happens, the macrophage induce what's called a cytokine storm in which huge amounts of these signal chemical messages are sent out to the body causing massive inflammation. This is what killed almost everybody in the Spanish flu in 1918. There was a cytokine storm in their body, and their lungs filled with fluid from the cytokine storm. It was because there wasn't sufficient quantities of D3 to stop the macrophages from doing this. These chemicals that are now being found by these doctors were basically, they say, put into the body to prevent the attachment of vitamin D to the macrophage, which causes all of these problems, including type 2 diabetes and cytokine storms. They go on to say, Kishor is working on a way to turn down the activity of macrophages in the body to help stop the cytokine storm. After noticing that macrophages have special receptors for vitamin D, Kishore decided to look at whether vitamin D deficiency might be making macrophages more active, contributing to insulin resistance and inflammation in cytokine storms. When you have less vitamin D, the macrophages are in a more active state, Kishore says. We believe that when you give people vitamin D, these inflammatory actions will be reduced. Also, when you inhibit vitamin D from attaching itself to the macrophage, you cause what's called a cytokine production in phosphatase, which massively increases inflammation in the cardiovascular system, leading to cardiovascular disease and atherosclerotic placking. So what I'm saying is that when you give this chemical into your body, this nagalase, it causes atherosclerotic placking, heart disease, and diabetes. And it causes you to die from these diseases much younger than you normally would.